Okay, I uh, tried to do the uh, Coke bottle trick again. Um, it's not working very well, so I'm gonna skip that. Uh, we can maybe look at the acoustics of that uh, later, but let's focus instead on what happens when we get more than one resonance uh, in a tube at the same time. So will the frequency of the second resonance be higher or lower than the first? Um, maybe you guess this, uh, or maybe we can just walk through it, um, but the frequency of the second resonance will be higher than that of the first resonance. So let's think about this. What happens when we have um, our so-called first resonance? Uh, we've got the same setup with a loudspeaker at one end. We've got the loudspeaker at this end. We've got a closed tube down here. So at time one, the initial impulse is sent down the length of the tube. Uh, I've got it in right here. So at time two, it's gonna bounce at the far end. And then at time three, it will return to the initial end. And what I need to do to get a resonating pattern set up is to reinforce it at that point. So I'm gonna push on it with a blue impulse at this point. And so when they combine, they're gonna be purple down here at the far end. Um, but eventually it'll bounce back at what, uh, again. And um, at this point, when it, whenever it reaches back here, I'm gonna to have to push again, just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So um, normally I ask this as a question in class. I don't wanna have just a one slide video. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you the answer here. But the period of this creature is the length of time in between pushes. It's the length of time in between impulses that get emitted from this loudspeaker end. So this is time one, this is time two, this is time three, this is time four. The period is the length of time in between cycles. It's the length of time in between the initiation or the pushes that reinforce that resonating pattern. So my period here is this time minus that time, time three minus time one. And we can stop and think about it for a second. Uh, I'm not gonna stop the video, but stop and think about it. What would the period be for the second resonance? Well, let's see uh, what the second resonance looks like, first of all. So with the second resonance, what I've got going on is that first impulse is still there. Um, and that's gonna travel the length of the tube. And as we saw before, at time two, it's gonna bounce, but I'm adding a second resonance here. I'm trying to get two different resonating patterns in the tube at the same time, which is kind of amazing, but it's the way it works. So what happens is I don't wait for this impulse to come back after time two. I just get started on the second one before it's too late. Uh, so at the exact same time, what I can do is send another pulse down the length of the tube. And then as that one travels down to the far end, this one's gonna come back. So at time three, I still get that same initial pattern that I was reinforcing before, right? So I've still got the red impulse reinforced by the blue impulse. Uh, and then this one, in, during that time, will have traveled down the length. And as this one is coming back to where it started, that second one is going to bounce at the far end. And then so what I do is I wait for that one to come back, which will happen at the exact same time as this reinforced one bounces here. And then as that comes back, I'm going to push it again and get that pattern reiterated, get that pattern sort of reinforced so it can keep going. And then I'm gonna have two bouncing back and forth patterns in this system. Um, it's a little bit like pushing two kids on a swing or two kids on different swings at the same time. So you can push this one first, wait for them to come back, and then you're kind of pushing back and forth like this. So the question in that case is, whether it's a loudspeaker or whether you're pushing kids on swings with your hands, is how long of a time period is there in between pushes? Um, before, we were looking at these pushes for the red impulse. And with that one, you have to wait from time one to time three. For the second resonance, hopefully you can see you're doing it twice as often. You're doing it twice as fast because you're pushing here, you're pushing here, you're pushing here, you're pushing here. So our time period, our period of the resonance is gonna be just time two minus time one, uh, which is also time three minus time two or time four minus time three, so on and so forth. It's twice as often as what you get for the first resonance. So if it's twice as often, that's twice the frequency of the initial resonance. Okay, um, hopefully that makes sense because this next point is uh, kind of the part of this that makes the least sense, but I'll try to walk you through it uh, as intuitively as I can. Um, so the problem that we mentioned before is that speech doesn't really involve closed tubes, or at least not normally. Normally we have our mouths open when we speak. Sometimes we can have it closed, but um, we won't talk about that quite yet. So let's think of a vocal tract as a tube with an open end. 
And then we have our sound pulse source at the closed end. So this is our loudspeaker down here. This is the thing doing the pushing of the air molecules. This is the open end, uh, which is just your open mouth. Uh, so it's not closed there. We're not going to get a true bounce like we did before. Uh, and But basically what we're have, having to worry about is that the vocal tract is going to be doing the resonating. So we're going to have to push at the right frequency to get the entire vocal tract to resonate. Uh, what frequencies are those? So again, we can get more than one resonance at the same time. Just keep that in mind. Let's think about it in terms of just one resonance for now. Uh, and what happens is that um, if I'm pushing um, a sound wave, uh, not against a hard surface, but kind of against an anti-surface, which is like an opening in a tube, then what happens is I get an anti-bounce. Uh, so when a sound pressure peak hits the open end of the tube, it doesn't get reflected back. It anti bounces. So what comes back is not a compression, but what comes back is a rarefaction. The pressure kind of disperses into the open air and a rarefaction gets sucked back into the tube back to where it came from. Uh, this is hard to imagine um, or kind of conceptualize uh, the way I think about it, which um, is hopefully something that will make sense for you too, is if you can think about what happens when a wave crashes into the shore on a beach so when it's crashing in, um, it's like a pressure pulse or like a peak in the wave front, right? Uh, and then it disperses onto the beach. Uh, and what comes back is not another pressure peak. It's not like water comes out of nowhere and comes uh, back as a wave going back into the ocean. It's an undertow, right? So if you stand there, the wave crashes over you and then the undertow gets sucked back into the ocean. Um, that's like a pressure peak, compression coming in and a rarefaction going back out. That's what happens when air comes out of the uh, open end of your mouth when you're speaking. Uh, so this is a visualization I borrowed from the internet again a long time ago. Um, but what this also kind of tries to show you is the timing of how this works. So we have to push at our loudspeaker end here, at our uh, vocal fold end. And that pressure peak travels down the length of the tube until it gets to the open end. Uh, and that compression is going to... Um, disperse and rarefy and this rarefaction comes back in towards the closed end of the tube. And that's going to travel like it normally does. And we're going to consider this to be a closed end of the tube here. Uh, so that's going to give you a true bounce for the rarefaction. That rarefaction goes in, bounces in a true fashion here and goes back out of your mouth as a rarefaction. And then when it gets to the far end, it too will anti-bounce. Uh, and so that rarefaction will go out as a rarefaction, what will come back in is another compression. And unfortunately this uh, visualization doesn't show this, but we have to wait until this compression comes back all the way to the closed end until you push again. Uh, so remember with our, I'll go back to this uh, setup. With this setup, you have to wait, right? Uh, for that pressure peak to come and bounce back before you push again. And that determines your period. Um, in this case of the open tube, I have to wait for that initial pressure peak. Well, it's not really going to be the same initial peak, but it's going to be a peak of some sort. So this peak gets dispersed, the rarefaction comes back in, bounces, goes back out. I have to wait for another pressure peak to come back in before I push again, because all I'm doing is reinforcing peaks to get a resonating pattern. Uh, so that's going to be a longer period of time. Um, we're not going to walk through the math of this in this class. Um, if you want to learn how it works, you can take 441. Uh, but ultimately what you wind up getting um, are a series of standing waves in an open tube that look like this. This is the far end where the pressure is uh, not changing in the way we normally think of it. Um, and again, I'm not gonna walk you through how this works mathematically. I'll just kind of go straight to the answer. But if the first resonant frequency in a tube like this is, um, well, I'm calling it F1 here. That's kind of a, I shouldn't do that. Uh, well, maybe I should, but we'll call it F1. Uh, F2 in that case is going to be three times F1. And the third resonant frequency F3 is going to be five times F1. Uh, so these are gonna go up by like odd numbers. So F1, three times F1, five times F1. If you kept going seven times F1, nine times F1, so, so on and so forth. Uh, and I'll show you what this looks like. So this is me. I'll play the vowel first. Not skip to the punchline too quickly. Uh, Let me make that a bit louder. Uh, so that's me trying to make something like a schwa as a vowel. And if I open this up and look at the spectrogram, 
Uh, what I see are my harmonics. Uh, I don't remember exactly what my pitch is here. I can kind of show it and get a sense. Something like 160 hertz. So I've got harmonics stacked, each one of them 160 hertz away from each other, all the way up the frequency scale. And what I see are these dark regions where certain harmonics are resonating. Uh, so they're becoming more intense just based on the length of my vocal tract. And then there's other parts where they're fading out a bit, then they come back again. This is the first resonance here, and this is the second resonance, this is the third resonance. They're easier to see if I change the settings here a little bit. So I'll change the window length to 0.005, and they kind of pop out a little bit better. And if I click kind of in the middle of these dark bars, this is my first resonating frequency or kind of range of resonating frequencies. If I click in the middle of that, yeah, I got to get it. So it proves my point. Uh, but uh, the first resonating frequency is right around 500 hertz. The second one is three times that. It's about 1500 hertz. The third is right around 2500 hertz or 500 times that, or sorry, five times the uh, lowest resonating frequency. Uh... All I'm doing here, I'm creating an open tube. So here's my loudspeaker. I've got a two which has like a right angle in it, but don't worry about that. It's got an open end at the far end where I say, uh, um, and I'm just phonating. So I'm creating a complex wave here. That complex wave has um, a lot of harmonics in it. We can see them going all the way up the scale. That's why it's complex and not a sine wave. Some of those harmonics are going to resonate based on the length of this tube. They're gonna intensify. Others will not. And the pattern I see is that the resonant, I'm getting more than one resonance in the tube at the same time. And the second one is three times the frequency of the first. The third is five times the frequency of the first. Um, I'm just creating an open tube and pushing sound waves down the length of it. And I get that sort of pattern. And uh, it's a vowel. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for now. Uh, there's probably gonna be questions about this. So I'm gonna set up a discussion board so you can ask. I'm also gonna post these videos to YouTube in case you wanna ask there. Maybe some other people in the broad world will ask them too. Who knows? That's it for now.